and good Monday evening to you. Welcome back to Weather for Weather Geeks. We had a couple of days off at the end of last week, so it's been a little while. Since we've done a, a Weather Geeks video, when we last spoke, we were uh, anxiously awaiting thunderstorms. That was a Wednesday. It was kind of a, a day where we had to pay attention to the weather all day, and really nothing materialized during the daylight hours. Then we had a couple of uh, strong thunderstorms overnight Wednesday night, when most of us were sleeping. Most of us did not witness those strong nocturnal storms. Anyway, new week, new pattern. We've gone kind of straight into October. Hey, by the way, did you check out us crashing a spacecraft into an asteroid live? Uh, just before I recorded this video, I watched that live on NASA TV, streamed it on my Facebook page as well. Really cool to see if we can change the trajectory of an asteroid. Maybe that's a skill that will come in handy someday. There's been movies about this kind of thing, and you never know when uh, we might have to, uh, you know, kind of deploy this skill, so it's good to see if we can actually do it. We successfully crashed into the asteroid. Uh, we'll see uh, how much uh, we changed its eventual path. So if you haven't seen, if you didn't watch that live, be sure and, you know, find a replay on the internet. It was really cool to see us getting closer and closer to that asteroid and then live crashing into it. Uh, really, really cool to see. All right, back here on Earth specifically in the Mahoning and Shenango Valleys. It was kind of a cool, breezy day today, changeable conditions throughout the day. Uh, occasionally, uh, we had some sunshine. Occasionally, we had some showers that pushed through, even a uh, couple of uh, bolts of lightning here and there, even a little soft hail with some action down in southern Columbiana County uh, late this afternoon and early this evening. Now, in our television viewing area, the rainfall amounts over the last 24 hours have been pretty modest, generally a quarter of an inch or less, but you'll notice all the bright colors off to the north. Boy, the lakeshore areas have just been getting pounded with a lake effect rain outbreak. Now, if it were November through early April, we'd be talking about a couple of feet of snow probably in some of the snow belt areas to our north. But we're not there yet, so it's rain and it's a lot of it. And it's been really adding up over the last 24 hours or so. Wanted to check in on our rainfall totals over the last 30 days. We're almost to the end of September, so this map fairly representative of September as a whole. Of course, we had some dry weather for a lot of the mid and late summer, and some of the driest areas that we had during that time frame, we've actually had a fairly wet September. Now, keep in mind, of course, a lot of this Mahoning County stuff occurred in, in one day, back on September 4th, the day before Labor Day, when we had the EF0 tornado in Boardman. We also had a deluge along the 224 corridor that day. But generally speaking, not as much uh, dry real estate across our area as we got into meteorological fall. As of the recording of this video at 7.30, we still had a couple of thunder showers up in uh, Geauga County, Lake County, parts of Ashtabula County as well. Otherwise, yeah, pretty quiet evening. Could be a shower here and there. But enough rain that flooding remains a concern with flood watches up for a uh, good chunk of the uh, snow belt areas uh, from Cleveland on east. So those are kind of the general uh, flood watches. There's been a couple of uh, flash flood warnings also uh, right along the lake shore, up in eastern Lake County, parts of um, western Ashtabula County as well. Just a lot of rain over the last couple of days. All right, of course, the tropics are going to be a big story over the next few days down here in Florida. Hurricane warnings are now up for the Tampa-St. Pete area. Tropical storm warnings, including Fort Myers, and hurricane watches off to the north. Now, this is just a snapshot in time. We're going to see an expansion of these hurricane warnings as we get closer uh, to the... Uh, true impacts beginning to impact or beginning to approach, I should say, uh, the west coast of Florida. This is a uh, healthy looking hurricane as expected. This has deepened rapidly, rapidly. It's strengthened rapidly over the last 24 hours. This was a tropical storm just 24 hours ago. Now a category two hurricane and Ian has wind gusts of 120 miles per hour near the eye. Movement north, northwest at 13. The pressure of course continues to drop and it's 155 miles to the southeast of the western tip of Cuba. The track all important, and you know, our eye always is drawn, even tr to trained meteorologists, our eye is always drawn to the middle of the cone where the icons are. But you gotta remember, these cones are here for a reason. There's inherent error in a forecast track of a tropical system. It's just about as likely to come over here and over here. So you gotta keep in mind that it doesn't always go down to the center of the cone. And this will have big implications for uh, residents of Florida, especially right around Tampa and along the west coast, if this takes a little more of a westerly track towards the western end of the cone, wind will not be as much of a story along the west coast of Florida. It'll be much more of a storm surge and rain problem. I think storm surge and rain is going to be a problem either way, but the wind will not be as much of an issue if it tracks a little offshore. If it tracks a little bit closer to the west coast of Florida, 
Uh, then you have wind on top of the rain and the storm surge. Now, if it were to take the little a little bit of an easterly jog, this seems like the least likely scenario right now, but it can't be ruled out either. If it were to take a little more of an easterly jog, this would reduce the storm surge flooding in uh, the Tampa Bay area because you'd have a little bit more of an offshore flow. Um, but it would be more of a problem in terms of rain and even wind a little farther inland, say around Orlando, around Disney World. Um, so very interesting uh, to see how this uh, transpires over the next couple of days. Back here at home, just a cool showery day coming our way Tuesday. Another trough of low pressure kind of pivoting around like spokes on a wheel. These little disturbances come down, they kick up the lake effect and what you see is what you get into tomorrow, into tomorrow night, even into parts of Wednesday, even though the flow on Wednesday will be a little more straight out of the north. Um, then kind of west to east like this. Um, and so the bands will take on a little bit of a different orientation on Wednesday, and they may be most numerous in the morning. We may see a little bit of a relaxation of the lake effect some Wednesday afternoon. And then finally, this will all shut down by Thursday as high pressure builds in, clouds should break for some sunshine. What eventually happens to Ian will have little implications on our weekend forecast. Here's a look at the uh, what we call a spaghetti plot, and it looks like strands of spaghetti, right? Well, basically every little line here or strand of spaghetti is an individual tropical model. There's a lot of them, a couple of dozen or a few dozen at least. And you know, the general consensus is that this kind of just peters out somewhat across the Carolinas, Virginia, before coming all the way to the north. So it kind of peters out, and a lot of the moisture gets shunted off to the east, it looks like, as a, an area of high pressure builds in from Canada. That's going to put a stop sign to that northward moving moisture. And you know, I think our weekend forecast will not be bad with just a small chance of a shower and just some clouds, some high cirrus clouds, that cirrus canopy on the northern fringe of the remnant moisture from Ian by the weekend. But if you have outdoor plans by Friday in the weekend, I think we'll be okay. As you can see, our models here are all very, very modest when it comes to rainfall totals over the next seven days. Quick look at the longer range. Um, I think uh, October, which uh, starts this weekend and continues, of course, uh, into early next week, that first week of October, uh, will be close to or maybe a, a little bit below average at times. As we get deeper into that first week of October and towards, say, the 10th or so, some of this warmth out here is going to try to come east. Now, it might meet a little resistance in the eastern U.S. I still think the warmest anomalies will be out here from, say, the 4th through the 10th, but closer to the 8th, 10th, uh, we might see a somewhat warmer pattern. But yeah, the first few uh, days of October do not look uh, particularly warm. Frost and freeze threats, something we'll be watching out for, of course, as we get deeper into fall. Thursday night, this week, Thursday night and Friday morning, probably too warm for most of us to have any frost, but I, I guess in the coldest nooks, light frost may be a possibility Thursday night, Friday morning with a clear sky. We'll hone in a little bit more on that as we get a little bit closer. We'll talk more about Ian and the rest of uh, the potential weather happenings coming our way as we say goodbye to September late this week on Weather for Weather Geeks. Thanks for watching tonight, everyone. I'll see you back here on Tuesday.